Hello and welcome to Greenfleet Talks. My name is Kate Armitage. I'm your host for our discussion today and I'm delighted to be joined by Kim Turner, Regional Sales Manager at BOT. Hi Kate. So Kim, this is the first time we've spoken. Um, I I don't know a great deal about BOT, so please uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and a little bit more about the company. Yeah, so I've been at BOT around six years now started off as a sort of sales coordinator and then worked my way up to regional sales manager, which is a job I absolutely love. It's a great company to work for. But as a company, so we are a world leading designer, manufacturer and installer of in-vehicle equipment. Predominantly, people will know us for racking, but that's not all we do. We do the electrics, we do the decals, floors, linings, accessories and anything in between like to manage the end-to-end process so we work with the leasing companies we work with the dealers we work with end users and all subcontractors to ensure a smooth and efficient process for the customer our main conversion site in the uk is in ashby in the midlands convert around seven thousand vehicles there a year got parking on site for 1400 vehicles and we've got nine pdi bays as well We've also got a site up in Cumbernauld in Scotland, which is a bit more of a satellite site, but it's great for that region. And then we've got a site down in Bude in Cornwall, which is our UK head office. And they also are starting to do conversions down there as well. So, Kim, obviously a very large organisation handling 7000 vehicles. Uh, But can you work with all vehicle types or there are some manufacturers that you are? Um, uh, have relationships with? We work with all major manufacturers. We've got, we're approved converters for many of them as well. We can convert anything from a car right up to a seven and a half ton daft truck. So we've done some Toyota Corollas recently for a customer and put an underfloor drawer system in the back. And we've also done full configurations for water authorities in DAF seven and a half ton trucks as well. So size isn't an, isn't an issue for us. Great. Okay. Uh, and now you were recently at the commercial vehicle show, I yeah. know. Um, uh, what products did you take and what were you showcasing? We showcased a bit of everything. We love the CV show. We've been many, many, many years. Um, I've been for the last six years since I've been with Bart and it's a great show to attend. Um, this year, we showcased all three of our racking ranges. So we showcased our modulo range, which is a no drill solution. And we put that in an ID buzz, which generated a lot of interest, an awful lot of interest. And we took our Uno range, which is a great range for companies who are looking to move from ply into metal racking, which we demonstrated in an Eva Varo at the show. So we had half of it ply and half of it in our Uno 3 range along with a crash test video demonstrating the risks of ply racking and why people should move to metal. And then we had a Goopal on stand, which is a tiny little van, which again generated a lot of interest. It's also electric and that had a Vario 3 range in it. We also had an MAN, again, which had a Vario 3 range, which is a lightweight aluminium solution. And then we had the new Ford Custom as well, which but also had our Vario 3 range in it. And again, with being opposite the Ford stand, that generated an awful lot of interest. Right, okay. Uh, obviously quite a wide range. I'd be honest and say I hadn't really thought about the safety implications of different types of racking. So thank you for bringing that to uh, to my attention. Kim, this is Greenfleet. Sustainability is very important to our viewers. How can your products and services help fleets reach their sustainability goals? So we obviously said earlier on that we don't just do racking. We also do decals and livery as well. So one of the things that we're looking to develop within that area of business is to use more recyclable materials which are PVC free. So not only will we use the recyclable materials on the vehicles, any excess material that we've got from the fitments will then go off to a separate company 
they'll be recycled and reused, not necessarily on new vinyl, but traffic cones is quite a popular thing that they're going to be made into. We'll then get a report once a month to say, this is how much you've sent us and this is what we've turned it into, which is, it's great not only to be recycling, but to also see what that is being made into and how that's being used in the wider communities. Because it's measurable, isn't it? It's, it's, mm. visit, it's ev evidence that actually, yes, we've, you know, we have been sustainable. Are there any other areas of your business where you have sustainability initiatives? Yes. So we're looking to grow our partner network at the moment throughout the UK. So it's recognised that we've got three good sites that can manage these conversions. And although we've got centralised locations, they still might be too far for people, especially if they've got electric vehicles and quite range conscious. Yeah. So developing this partner network is great because people might be able to now travel 30, 40 miles rather than trying to or having to travel 150 miles to get their vehicle converted. So that's another thing we're trying to do to make things closer for people. Yeah. So reducing the mileages, reducing yeah, the fuel exactly. consumption, saving time, saving money. Yeah. yeah. And Kim, in addition to extending your partner network, I believe BOT has another initiative to reduce vehicle mileage? Yes, so we're also partnering with a company called NVD, who are based at UK Ports. So the plan is to have the vehicles converted at port, which is great. It lowers the mileage on the vehicles. It's great for decarbonisation, risk, time. So all elements that fleet managers are concentrating on this will sort of dissolve all of those issues hopefully yeah great okay I get it and it's just kind of logistically so much more straightforward to yeah, catch the vehicles as they come but normally the, the vehicles will get delivered into port and then they'll come to one of our three UK sites whereas if we can eliminate that additional movement get them converted at the port and then delivered straight onto the customer it's a win-win for everybody yeah, great. Um, and as well as um, the vehicles and the materials that, you, that you're using, are there any other uh, wider sustainability initiatives um, within your organisation? Yes. So at the start of this year, we launched the Bot Toolkit. It had its full launch at the CV show, but we did start and initiate it internally in January. So that involves a QR code being put in every vehicle as soon as it arrives on site and this QR code then gets linked to the specification any additional electrical items that are on the vehicle and anything that would normally have a paper manual so if people have an onboard weighing system or an inverter or anything like that that normally has a paper manual the fleet managers were finding that drivers weren't looking at it it was being shoved in a glove box and then they were asking how to use certain equipment so this will hopefully eliminate any ambiguity on that where they can just scan the QR code that's in the side of the door and it will pop up and it will show them anything and everything that's on that vehicle. So that's kind of in its infancy at the moment, but there's a lot of different add-ons that are available for that, which will hopefully be being launched within the next sort of six to 12 months as well. Great. Brilliant. I mean, Kim, it's, um, such a simple thing to do but these manuals you know it's a lot of paper yes uh, it is an awful lot of paper and that's I mean you look at the manual you get when you get a, a new car or a new van right it's yeah yay thick so it's yeah uh, absolutely and you're, and you're quite right you know they don't get read until you need them uh so you may as well just have the information as and when you need it Plus, plus, of course, you can update that information without having to reissue documents. Exactly, so, so something's changed. And as well, okay. fleet managers, if they've got initiative, they want vehicle, their drivers to do vehicle checks. If they've got a news bulletin that they need to go out, that can that can all get added onto this QR yes, code. Yes. So the drivers have got everything they need with the vehicle that they're, they're in day in, day out. So Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, quite often the most simple things are the best in my experience. Yes. Yeah. One of the other things as well, so with people moving to electric vehicles, they're going to be more weight conscious. So we've installed a weigh bridge on site, which is used for prototypes. When So when customers are moving to electric vehicles, we'll redo the design and aim to reduce as much weight as possible.
of when we've then converted that initial vehicle, we'll get it weighed because it might be that when it's on the weigh bridge, there's things that they notice that they say, oh, well, we don't need that or we could cope with that being smaller, etc. So that's another great thing because obviously the less weight you've got in the van, the better range you're going to have. So, uh, so that prototyping process is really important, isn't it? So that businesses understand the implications of the buying decisions that they're making in terms Definitely. of... Definitely. And when you're moving, when you're moving across from an ICE to an alternative fuel vehicle, it's not always a like-for-like like conversion. There's elements that you're not going to be able to carry over into that. So, yeah, making sure that they've got as much available payload left and as much range as possible is is really important. Uh, right. And this issue of uh, racking and payload and weight isn't electric vehicle specific from mm -mm. a from a sustainability point of view. You know, all. all the equipment that you're carrying around is using fuel. So the more you can lightweight the vehicle, the better. But I think um, I completely agree with you that sometimes switching to an electric vehicle makes people more sensitive and more considerate of that additional weight and going back on the previous point that you'd made having an organized workspace as well not only having an, a more lightweight solution in the racking but if your vehicle is more organized likelihood is you won't need to carry as much because you'll be able to find what you need so from a weight perspective a lot of customers have found that since they've had an organised racking system in their vehicle, the drivers aren't carrying as much, they're not getting pulled for being overweight. So from that perspective, it's good as well. Oh, I can definitely see the wider benefits in terms of, um, like you say, not, not carrying unnecessary equipment. Um, uh, you touched on safety earlier on, and there must be some ad safety advantages to having everything in racking and secured within the vehicle. But the time saving as well, you know, being more organised, uh, which must have a health and safety element to it as well. Definitely. And like I say, the crash test video that we had at the CV show from ply to, to metal racking, that, that generated an awful lot of interest because it's not just from a safety perspective. If a drivers found to be carrying an insecure load there can be fines yeah to them and the company as well so yeah it's very important well kim you've certainly given me food for thought and really kind of brought to my attention a lot of uh things that are very relevant to anyone who's looking to green their fleet uh i would like to thank you very much for your time because it's been a pleasure talking to you Problem. Uh, and thank you, of course, to Bot for joining Greenfleet Talks. And thank you for watching. Please tune in to GF365 again soon.